the first speaker is uh, Amina Chasli, and um, she is working as a lecturer at the Environmental Department in the Science Faculty at the Maldives National University. Her primary research is on conservation and climate change. The second speaker is Fatima Chadia. Um, she's a, a lecturer also in the Environment Department um, of science, in the Science Faculty at Maldives National University. She has 10 years of teaching experience in the field of science and environment. And her primary research and teaching interests relate to development planning, sustainable development, and environmental education. So without further ado, I'll pass over to the first speaker. Thank you very much, and enjoy the lecture. Good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you all for coming to this presentation we have. Uh, and before I begin, as Gabriel mentioned, uh, this research would not have been possible if it not for the funding from Mangoes to the Future, a small grants uh, that we applied for and got it uh, at the time that we uh, was thinking of the study. And as the title says, Environmental Relation Program and Blue, a case study of ecological, social, and economic perspective, uh, I will be focusing more on the ecological, uh, looking into the biodiversity assessment really, and then uh, Shadia will continue with the rest of the events. So, our site is a big group. How many of you know what a big group is? Can you raise your hands? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we have an idea what a mangrove is, right? It's it's these bodies of water that you find, uh, especially in our small island state, uh, enclosed by vegetation, and it can come in different forms. It can be closed or or it can be open or it can exist as an anywhere. Uh, the current mangrove that we have taken is the Hura mangrove. And it's an open mangrove. It has an opening to the open sea, and so it gets uh, daily circulation of so water in and out of the mangrove. As you can see from this uh, map here, uh, the mangrove covers around 52 percent of the island area, and its approximate size is around nine hectares. Whereas the Total island is around 18.8 hectares in total. And uh, why we have chosen this mangrove as our site of uh, research? Well, uh, we are lecturers and we are quite busy with our schedule every day. And so this mangrove is quite, quite close to Malik. And so it's very convenient, it is accessible. And also, the other two reasons is it's one of the most frequently visited mangroves uh, by our university students, as well as students from schools, and uh, even tourists that come from uh, close by resorts. Okay. And the other spe special reason is that it's a protected area under the Maldives Preservation, Protection and Preservation Act, and it has been considered as a nature reserve uh, by the EPA, but as most protected areas goes, uh, it's, it's just there in paper. There has not been any management plans uh, done for the mangrove uh, as far as we know. In order to assess the biological diversity of the mangrove, which is one of the objectives, uh, we did an assessment of both the vegetation and the soil. Um, in order to carry out the vegetation analysis, we tagged each and every one of the vegetation vegetative trees. And you can see from here, from the first stop picture, uh, that's how we used to tag it. Okay. And um, we actually considered a baseline when tagging because we did measure the girth of the trees. So every seedling or every tree that has a girth of more than 10 centimeters was counted in. And then the other thing that we measured was the height of the tree. And we used a clinometer. And then uh, using the clinometer, we measured the angle at a specific distance. Uh, 
the Y was uh, taken to be around 10, 10 meters from the tree. And then uh, using the mathematical equations, uh, the height was calculated. For soil assessment, uh, we wanted to uh, note how deep the sedimentation is, is near each and every tree. So we kind of found it difficult. Uh, there wasn't a device that we could use uh, in order to do that at the time. So the students, um, the Bachelor of Environment Management students of 2012, they came up with this idea of um, having a cemented pipeline, a PVC pipe, uh, uh, implanted into it to be used as a sediment measurement tool. So as you can see here, Kisam holding that instrument down there. Uh, the PVC pipe is around 5 meters long with the cemented body uh, of around 5 kg. And what we did was uh, near every tree, we just uh, inserted the pipe into the soil and just let it sink in on its own to how, uh, how much of a depth that it goes and then we pulled it out and then measured the length of the segment. Uh, segment line that was recorded on the bike. If you look into the results, uh, we measured over 4,000 mangroves uh, to be populated in this mangrove vegetation. And then we found out that there were four main species. Rhizophora mucronata, which is Randu, in Lehi, Lugaria gymnoriza, Moravaki, and uh, we, as you can see, <laughs> it all looks similar, right, with the leaves and everything. But there are very distinct features in these uh, main groups relating to their flower, relating to their fruits, relating to their trees, and even the bark. And we also came to develop a guide based on these features because uh, many students uh, who visited the site, even for me in my first visit, he was kind of led to and asked to identify the species and he was say, what? These all look like the same. Okay. And then after some time when we kind of roam around and then looked at specifically the flower, the branches, the leaves, then only we tend to see the difference. And so it's not very easy to find the differences in these. So a guide is something that can help the school students, even our university students. So um, it's there for you to use them. And we found that Rugenia Cilindrica was the most abundant, uh, while is, um, the Rhizophora Micronata Randu was the least. Uh, with these colorations, actually the green represents the Lugaria Lendrica, whereas the yellow represents the Rhizophora Micronata Randu. And you can see it's a lot of green there with a uh, sparsely uh, kind of distributed yellow. And um, we are still analyzing. Uh, the girth and height dimensions of these trees, so in order to find uh, any correlation that we have there. But um, uh, the data is still existing, but we haven't been able to quite look into the details of that region. And if we go into the sediment analysis, <clears throat> we found that towards the northwest side was. Uh, was the area with most sediment, um, while is, um, the southeast area uh, has kind of uh, lower sedimentation. And uh, as you can see, uh, with more sediment area, you can see that there are more of the micronata species coming in, whether there's a correlation with sedimentation and these species existing in the venue is also another thing that we need to analyze in. And uh, these GIS maps were actually produced with the help of uh, 
GPS uh, locations that were dotted down with hand, for hand uh, GPS. And it's again one of our graduates that is of the nomination uh, five to help us in developing this. So, uh, in this study, actually, we have got a lot of support from the university, from our BAM students, and uh, the So that's all from me. And now, I will be Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to start the next part of the presentation, which is about um, the legal formula and ecosystem relation. So we found that uh, this metro is extremely rich in a lot of um, organisms, and uh, it's a very complex habitat for many uh, organisms that is there. So what we found is uh, metro ecosystems are uh, very rich in metro ecosystems, and they help to sustain complex um, ecosystem and different species distribution in their environments. So if you, if you sit there, you can see a variety of species and it's not uh, visible in other part of the world. And, and one of the reasons why there is so much of effect, um, so much of species in this country is the root system. Uh, there is an extensive root system that is very unique and this root system provides a lot of, uh, it's a good habitat for um, many organisms such as fish, snail, crab, shrimp, and uh, jellyfish, and even a um, lot of aquatic like uh, organisms that see in this uh, uh, root system, and they use the root as uh, a habitat. And also, in addition to that, uh, we found that uh, the Buddha Metro holds uh, a lot of crabs there. Birds, migratory birds are there, even though the birds we can see, and also evidence of fish and uh, reef fish. And here we have one effective uh, uh, reef shark. So, the shark also we observe as a reef also observe. So, this habitat, uh, if you want to see the metal potential in one place, put up with the ideal place. And uh, we saw fiddler crabs and mangrove crabs as the most evident species of crabs there. And then there are migratory birds, and uh, apart from uh, this very organism, terrestrial organisms are also there, um, such as bees and spiders, and so many things we find in the top. And we made a list of the local fish species found in the area. So this is a list of the species we found uh, in the mangrove area. This is a local area, and this is a interesting and scientific area. So a lot of uh, reef fish we are able to spot in this area. And then specifically our study focus on crabs because crab is a peaceful species and their role is very important in the sustenance of the mango. So there were thousands of crabs are seen and crab is a rich source of food for birds and fish that frequently visit the mango. And then um, their species is very a good indicator of the health of the uh, mango. And then we found uh, that uh, crabs affect the sediments uh, structure. So in the earlier uh, part, when Charles presented, she showed the map on the sedimentation. So that is actually affected by the activity of the crab. So crab affects the sediment structure and influence other organisms living in the uh, main group. So if the crab population is somehow affected, the health of the uh, main group will be affected because it's a key stone species. And then uh, we were, uh, we saw that a lot of uh, bioinductivities were taking place by the crabs. So, uh, concentration of burrows creates space of bacteria which provide nutrients for crab any production. So, here um, we can see uh, there are two types of crabs, fever crab and metro crabs, and they make a lot of burrows on the ground. And this uh, burrowing action actually gives space for bacteria and other species to. Um, Oxygen and as a result, nutrients are also. And when, when, when high tide comes, the burrow takes a lot of water, and when the water comes, nutrients get mixed inside the, the soil. So, this helps in soil, soil nourishment. And also, it helps in mixing of sediments. So, that's the main role of crabs in the ecosystem. 
And then when we look at the species of crabs there, we found two finger crab and mango crab. Finger crabs are very small, colorful crabs, and mango crabs are very large uh, crabs. Uh, mango crabs are used uh, as a delicacy by uh, the Chinese tourists who visit the mango. So this picture here shows the mango, the finger crabs. They are very small and they are very um, difficult to spot, but their color is very visible. And then here we have mango crabs. So mango crab is the largest species uh, of crab found in Pura. And they make burrows in the mighty mango floor and edition areas. And also they take shelter from vultures and dogs. So during, um, during the north of you can see the, the, uh, the crabs making the shelter. So in this diagram, you can see how the crab is actually um, helping in increasing the nutrient content of the soil. So when they make this hole, the burrow, from here, a lot of oxygen will, air is going inside the soil, so aeration is taking place. And also, crab is actually breaking down large leaves and it's falling onto the ground. So this breaking down of nutrient is being faster. So overall, the whole, uh, let's say, the marine structure of the mangrove, that means mangrove flow, becomes very rich in nutrients, all due to the activity of the crabs. And then, um, So uh, our method, uh, how to estimate crab and pura mangrove. So we divided the mangrove into three sides. So we have side A, side B, B and side C. And then uh, we adopted the barrel counting method. And then, so in these three areas, we were counting the barrels so using this quadrant sum. Quadrant uh, sampling method. So we use the line translate actually uh, to make the and we did a line cross and progress from that. And then a uh, random uh, selection of 25 crab holes within each of the were counted. The element of the largest and the smallest crab hole was counted. And then we got a second crab to our mission. So our result shows that um, more than 50% of the crab holes were less than 2 cm in diameter. And then along 26 transit lines, 358 projects are counted, and then we talk to uh, 2,500 crabs for observation. So this is our result here. And then from here, we saw that majority of the crab holes had a diameter less than 2 cm, and only around 126 holes had a diameter bigger than 10 cm. So there were at least, uh, there were many um, interstate crabs there, so actually the crab hole the size is less, but then uh, there are the mangrove, large crabs are there, the holes are much bigger. And we estimated crab population uh, by using uh, this formula here. Population of the crabs in contract uh, is equal to mangrove area into number of crab holes given by contract area. And then we found that there were 61,000 crabs uh, lost to my Avaro exceeding 10 centimeters. So 10 centimeters is significant because it is when the Avaro is uh, exceeding 10 centimeters, we assume there is a mature crab in the hole. And mature crabs are used uh, uh, for hunting activities by tourists to which this is the uh, my group. And uh, we assume that the mature ones, uh, the females will carry the eggs, so preservation of the mature crabs is very much uh, important if we want to maintain the future generation of the crabs. And then uh, ecological importance of crabs uh, is plays a major role in processing litter that fall onto the mangrove, so and also aerate the soil and also helps with the sediment. So this is one uh, uh, key role of the crabs in the ecosystem. And they are active very low tide, so they, the mangrove is actually flooded by uh, tide, uh, they, uh, they say by water during high tide. So for this, uh, we, it was a challenge for us to count the crabs because the high tide will wash away the holes. So we have to wait till the, it becomes low tide, till the mangrove becomes dry. So, uh, the threats we are we identified were crabs are all exploited in Puna mangrove uh, because local tourism is very much uh, let's say happening in Puna mangrove and Chinese tourists they have a demand for mangrove crabs. 
So since the uh, group is small and population of pets are limited, uh, we found that large group pets are being overexploited uh, by the local tourist school system. And that is one of the concerns uh, we, we can do this, uh, we are trying to do this. And the second part is uh, known as economic preservation of the mangrove. We thought that if we want to conserve the mangrove, we have to find a way of showing the public a value of the mangrove. And uh, if we don't want to put the crabs or the science behind it, the community, the, let's say the normal community, will not understand uh, why we need to preserve the mangrove. So we came up with economic preservation as a tool uh, so, show the significance of the rule. So, uh, we were looking at environmental radiation as a tool, and it is a tool used to estimate a marketable price for the quality of services. So, we were trying to like, quantify the service provided by the group and then place a dollar value. So, that uh, the value of the service is going to be so the main purpose of environmental preservation is to find best alternatives that provide highest benefit to human well-being. So we thought that when we are coming with conservation models, if we have a efficient tool added to it, uh, our argument will be much more valid rather than the science only. So our um, technical preservation method is market price only to be applied, and then um, we use focus group interviews to collect data. So we met with council, council members, as well as guest house um, people who are involved in the local tourism, and so we are interviewing them, and then taking data for this. Um, and then our research, research shows that from the scientific study, we found that there are 61,000 crabs there, um, which um, exceed in centimeter diameter. So the price <coughs> in the island is $5. They sell a crab at $5 in restaurants, so we, we assume that $5 is the work, and then one month, but with a further number of species present there. And then the Kandu trees uh, was, is used in Maldives as to, uh, to make a uh, boat. So there's a demand for Kandu trees to make boat uh, in Maldives, and one logo of Kandu tree is uh, in the market, it is uh, like uh, $32. So this is a population of cardo trees we found, that is 2,025 cardo trees we identified, and then market price for each log of this tree is $34. So this is the estimated price. And then black tip reef, baby, she baby sharks are also very important uh, because nearby resorts uh, in Hura, the tourists, they pay around $250 to watch one single shark. So, in this study, we, we saw 16 sharks uh, coming from the reef into the, the waters. So in one um, spotting, we found 16 sharks. So if each tourist paid $250 to, pay, to see one reef shark, uh, we um, assumed that 16 sharks in the new one will be around $4,000. And um, Kura Mangrove is famous for school visits as well as university visits. And on average, around $10 each student uh, pay uh, when they visit this uh, site. So school visit, um, we estimated $500 um, for 50 trips. And so it, it is coming around um, 5 million in Rufia, the world of Kura Mangrove. Only, uh, but this 5 million is actually a very uh, small we were able to capture a very small amount because we were only concentrating on the crab, the cardo trees, like the, the reef shark, and also the fashion tree. But Kura uh, Mangrove offers more than this. There are more trees, more ecosystem services that you are not able to capture. So this 5 million is just a snapshot <laughs> of the value of Kura Mangrove. But if we do a further study on all the trees and take into most of the ecosystem services in this study, uh, I would say the value will be more than this. So in, uh, I recommend further research on uh, more ecosystem services so that we can build on this 5 million to come to a closer value of, uh, of let's say, worth of the place. But this uh, research is giving just the surface a snapshot of what is happening here.
because uh, we have limitation of uh, our findings only to when do crabs, carnal trees, black uh, reef sharks, and investor trees. But if you take other things into consideration, the value will go uh, more than 5 million rupiah. So the discussion, uh, I think, is interesting because the social research conducted among the local community, we found that they were not happy with the current protected area of uh, model EPA. EPA has declared a big group as a particular area place, but at the moment people are not happy because this is one quote we got from the community. They say the big group belongs to the people of Kura, which is their natural resource, but due to the current protected area model applied to the people, they say they are not allowed to touch anything in the main group. So there's social or community isolation with the people in the main group. People, the community thinks it's their resource, but the law says they can't touch anything. As a result, people are isolated, so they are very disconnected from the natural resource. And this is actually creating more conflict then uh, rather than protecting the area, the people are not kind of against protecting it because they are not happy with the model. So that's one interesting uh, finding we found from uh, the social research. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that no ecosystems are rich in biodiversity. It is an ideal breeding ground for many fish species and may function as a nursery ground for uh, marine and freshwater organisms. Mangroves crops are popular among tourists visiting Kura. And also, uh, there's exploitation, over exploitation of mangrove crabs going on in Huda at the moment. And if we are valuing them, from this study, we found that the value is exceeding 5 million, so it should be here uh, 5 million. And in order to protect the mangrove, the current protected area model applied by EPA needs to be revised to a more participatory model. So that's our main findings. Thank you. Yeah, I think I have a more question. I have two, two comments and questions. One is um, you, you mentioned that the local communities are very happy with the environmental because they don't see value from the mangroves. Um, has there been any exploration of thinking of maybe charging a small fee for people who visit the mangrove and then putting that money into the, into the local community? I uh, we don't propose it, but even at the moment, I don't go with that proposal because EPA model is not aligned with the community proposal. The community is opposed to the They don't align with each other. So, at the moment, it's going to be with you guys. Because you have a lot of wall walls in my world. There's also things you know. I'm not sure if it's a little bit of a minute or a minute or a minute or a Highlight from the research of the revisit model, the model, and how it is something that is not so important. Most people don't say value in the conservation. And the other point is, I saw there was a lot of information on the different types of species and their height and their um, location. And I think from, from a lot of the information you have, you start probably with biomass and yeah. mangroves. Um, if you also take soil samples and look at the carbon content, what kind of carbon content in soils, and you can get a picture of the carbon stocks in the mangroves. Yeah. And, and it's a bit more of an abstract con con concept, but there are kind of potential pain schemes for um, maintaining carbon stocks. Uh, there are you know, carbon markets that do exist around the world where uh, there, are, there are incentives that exist to not cut down trees and also the mangrove ecosystems and to reduce the carbon emissions. So maybe it's something to take Although it's a bit more complicated than efficient growth. But uh, the, I think collecting data is very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. 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 Now, related to the main group, it's actually the tourists uh, and are nearby, so they already have a package or they have a great design to uh, the whole uh, tour kind of visit the island and then the visit to the main group. So, <laughs> at the moment, yeah, so they know the value of the main group, 
but uh, they can't even seem to get the community to acknowledge that because, as you mentioned, uh, they don't see a value in themselves. So the tourists are coming from outside, and the other money is staying outside. It's not staying in the end.
Thank you. 